In this video, I will show you my new dashboard design for 2025. The design is inspired by Rounded by Leon, our Casa by Damien Eickhoff, and my smart home. It uses Bubble Card for the pop ups. You can find their links in the description as well as the link to the full code on GitHub and Gumroad. For 2025, I did a pretty substantial redesign of my dashboard, and it all started when I discovered Navbar Card, which now is one of my favorite cards. I have another video about it, which I will link in the top corner. Before, I had two dashboards, one for desktop and tablet and one for mobile. But with Navbar Card, I was able to merge them into one fully responsive design. Let's look at the dashboard. I will start with the desktop version and show you the mobile version afterwards. At the top, we have a welcome message that changes based on the time of day. It features a written overview about the state of the home. On the right side, we have some chip cards that also show some of the most important information, like how many lights are on or the state of my lock. If you click the lights button, a bubble card pop-up opens with all the lights in them. For most of the others, it shows the more info tab. Underneath, we have another row of status buttons. All of these lead to bubble card pop-ups. The weather one opens a weather pop-up that shows today's weather, including a rain radar or the week's forecast, which you can toggle at the top. The temperature and humidity open the climate pop-up, which has a custom thermostat card to control climate in the different rooms. My alarm button opens the settings for the alarm. This is a custom setup, which features a light and sound alarm, which are offset from another. I will make a video about it, going more in depth on how to set it up. And the last one shows the vacuum controls. On the right side, we have the different rooms. If you click the button, it opens the room's pop-up. This pop-up has controls for the climate, devices and lights. At the bottom, it also shows if media is playing in the room. If you long press a room card, you can toggle the light and once light is on, we can use the slider to adjust it. Another feature is that if I open a window, the room icon changes, so I always know if a window is left open. In the middle of the dashboard, we have a map. This usually features the GPS trackings of our dogs, but I took it out for this video. This is mostly a visual divider to make the dashboard look better on desktop screens. Once there is an active device, the map is hidden and the active devices are shown instead. We will see that later. Underneath, we have music control and security. Let's start with security. The security section features a custom alarm control panel card that lets me change the state of the security system. Underneath, I can see who is home, including our dogs. The cards feature the related battery sensors. If you click the alarm button, it takes you to the security page. Here we have some additional information about the locks of the house on the right, and we can toggle the cameras on and off. When I am at home, the cameras are cut from power using a smart outlet. Underneath, we can see all the window sensors and motion sensors in the house. As you can see, only in the office there is motion detected. That's me right now. If we want to go back, we can use the navbar card on the side. Even the room pop-ups are accessible from here. The next page to look at is the music page. It features an iframe with music assistant, so I have full control directly from the dashboard. But I can also use the buttons on the side to start music or play a specific playlist. Let's start some music from the main page. When I click this button, music starts playing in the living room. Because my receiver automatically turns on, we can see the map gets hidden and we see active devices instead. The dashboard also features an energy page. This is mostly the normal energy cards as they provide a lot of good information. We can see our solar production and energy usage. In the navbar card, we also have a personal settings pop-up. Each user has its own pop-up and this one only shows for me. Inside we have personal settings and some home settings that we use often, like turning on the guest Wi-Fi. The last page is the server page. It features information about our setup, including speeds, controls for Wi-Fi and AdGuard. It also includes information about the system running Home Assistant. I run Home Assistant on an old Optiplex PC. It also features an admin section that is only visible to me. This section shows me if there's any problems with my entities, if there are any updates or if I need to change batteries. If you click more in the navbar card, there are links to our shopping list, music assistant, settings and developer tools, in case we ever need them. Let's move on to the mobile version. At the top we have the same chips, just showing a few less. They also take us to the same pop-ups. Underneath we have a custom welcome card, which also shows who is home right now. 
After that, we have the temperature, energy and humidity information. This is actually a swipe card and if you swipe right, it shows some quick access buttons for things we use often, like turning on the guest Wi-Fi. We can swipe again to reveal less used pop-ups. Below, we can find the rooms. We can actually toggle another quick access here. I am using Bermuda BLE tree laceration with my Apple Watch to know which room I am in. From this, I can change the temperature, turn on music or a device that I use often. The room cards are the same as the desktop version. If you press them, the room pop-up opens and long press works as well. Here you can see how it looks when media is playing. The music page is a little bit more simple than on desktop. We can choose which room to play music in and if music is playing, it features a custom media player. To play a specific playlist, we can use this pop-up. The media player at the bottom is a mobile-only feature. It stays there on every page to quickly interact with the music. If you are interested in how I set it up, I have another video where I go in depth on this card and how it works. The security page is pretty similar. Most of the information is condensed to just the important stuff. Some stuff, like the cameras, have its own pop-up. The personal settings pop-up, server page and the energy page are pretty much the same as they are on desktop. That's my personal dashboard. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the custom theme of course features light and dark mode. However, I always use it in dark mode. I hope you liked my dashboard design and it gave you some inspiration for your own. As I said, you can find the full code in the link in the description. I just started this YouTube channel. So if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have other videos where I create custom cards and show off some cool Axe cards. Thanks for watching.